welcome to the fourth video I'm doing in a series in response to an article by Chris Gunners of Authority Nutrition called 8 Ridiculous Myths About Meat Consumption. His fourth myth is that red meat causes cancer. He says one common belief is that meat, especially red meat, causes cancer. This is where things get a bit more complicated. It is true that processed meat is associated with an increased risk of cancer, especially colon cancer. Gunners then links to a study that shows that processed meat is associated with an increased risk of cancer. The abstract says, processed meat intake may be involved in the etiology of colorectal cancer. Several hypotheses, which are mainly based on studies carried out on red meat, may explain why processed meat intake is linked to cancer risk. One is that high fat diets could promote carcinogenesis via insulin resistance or fecal bile acids. The second is that cooking meat at high temperature forms carcinogenic heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. The third is that carcinogenic and nitroso compounds are formed in meat. And the fourth is that heme iron in red meat can promote carcinogenesis. But Gunners says that when it comes to unprocessed red meat, things aren't as clear. Although several studies suggest that even unprocessed red meat can raise the risk of cancer, review studies show a different picture. Two review studies, one that looked at data from 35 studies and the other from 25 studies, found that the effect for unprocessed red meat was very weak for men and non-existent for women. I had a look at the abstract of the two studies that Gunners linked to. The first is called Red Meat and Colorectal Cancer, a Critical Summary of Prospective Epidemiologic Studies. In the abstract, it says that collinearity between red meat intake and other dietary factors, example Western lifestyle, high intake of refined sugars and alcohol, low intake of fruits, vegetables and fiber, and behavioral factors like low physical activity, high smoking prevalence, high body mass index, limit the ability to analytically isolate the independent effects of red meat consumption. The second study is called Meta-Analysis of Prospective Studies of Meat Consumption and Colorectal Cancer. In the abstract it says, the available epidemiologic data are not sufficient to support an independent and unequivocal positive association between red meat intake and CRC. This conclusion is based on summary associations that are weak in magnitude and the likely influence of confounding by other dietary and lifestyle factors. So Gunners found two review studies that show that there was no association between red meat intake and colorectal cancer. This is because the influence of other dietary and lifestyle factors made it too hard to tell. However, there were two major Harvard studies done that do show a link between red meat and other animal source foods intake and cancer, while taking into account the influence of other dietary and lifestyle factors such as the consumption of fruits and vegetables. Look it up, red meat causes cancer. March 12, 2012, the results of two major Harvard studies were published. 37,000 men, 83,000 women, the Harvard Health Professionals Follow-up Study, and the Harvard Nurses Study. Back in the 80s, researchers at Harvard started following these 120,000 people who were initially free of known heart disease and cancer at the beginning. A few decades later, though, and about 24,000 had died, including about 6,000 from heart disease, 9,000 from cancer. Meanwhile, all along, every four years, the researchers were checking in and keeping track of everyone's diet. Conclusion. Red meat consumption associated with an increased risk of total mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, and cancer mortality, meaning a significantly shorter lifespan. And this was after controlling for age, weight, alcohol, exercise, smoking, family history, caloric intake, and even the intake of whole healthy plant foods, such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. So it's not like the people eating more meat were dying prematurely because they were eating less vegetables. They seemed to be dying prematurely because they were eating more meat. The substitution of other healthy protein sources associated with lower mortality risk. The most powerful protector they found was nuts, associated with dropping mortality risk 19%. Why? Because food is a package deal. The chair of Harvard's nutrition department, who, in his Essentials of Healthy Eating guide, explains about picking the best protein packages by emphasizing plant sources of protein rather than animal sources. Protein is not consumed in isolation. Instead, it's packaged with a host of other nutrients. The quality and amount of fats, carbohydrates, sodium, other nutrients in this protein package may influence long-term health. What's Harvard's bottom line? 
go with plants. Eating a plant-based diet is healthiest. Another large study done also shows that there is a link between meat, dairy, and egg intake and pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers. Less than 5% of victims even make it out five years. But how do you study something that's so rare? Bring to bear the largest study ever. The NIH AARP study is currently following a half million American men and women in their 50s and 60s. What do you think they found? Who thinks pancreatic cancer is associated with beef fat? Bacon? Chicken? Fish? Dairy? Eggs? The answer, according to the largest such study ever, is all of the above. Dietary fat of animal origin was associated with increased pancreatic cancer risk. Pancreatic cancer is significantly associated with red meat, significantly associated with dairy, and when one adds in all other meats, fish and eggs, it makes the cancer connection even stronger. But no association with plant fat. Conclusion? Evidence of a role for animal fat in the development of pancreatic cancer, but no connection with any kind of fat from plant food sources. What if we just eat animal foods that are low fat, like skim milk? An even newer study out this year found an even stronger link between pancreatic cancer and animal protein, an even tighter correlation than with animal fat. Plant protein, on the other hand, appeared protective. Even animal sugars are associated with pancreatic cancer. There's only one animal sugar, lactose. So animal fat, animal protein, and animal carbs all independently associated with pancreatic cancer risk. Gunners continues, It does appear that the way meat is cooked can have a major effect on its health effects. Several studies show that when meat is overcooked, it can form compounds like heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which have been shown to cause cancer in test animals. Gunners links to the cancer.gov website, which says that heterocyclic amines, HCAs, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, are chemicals formed when muscle meat, including beef, pork, fish, and poultry, is cooked using high temperature methods such as pan frying or grilling directly over an open flame. Exposure to high levels of HCAs and PAHs can cause cancer in animals. However, whether such exposure causes cancer in humans is unclear. Ongoing studies are investigating the associations between meat intake, meat cooking methods, and cancer risk. Gunnar says that to reduce the formation of HCAs and PAHs, choose gentler cooking methods, and always cut away burned or charred pieces. So the answer is not to avoid red meat, but to make sure not to burn it. Keep in mind that overheating can cause harmful compounds to form in many other foods. This is not exclusive to meat. Gunners then links to a study that shows that harmful compounds are formed in a variety of cooked foods. This study is called Advanced Glycoxidation End Products in Commonly Consumed Foods. The results of this study showed that foods of the fat group showed the highest amount of AGE content. High values were also observed for the meat and meat substitute group. The carbohydrate group contained the lowest values of AGEs. The conclusion on this study is that the results indicate that diet can be a significant environmental source of AGEs, which may constitute a chronic risk factor for cardiovascular and kidney damage. So this study proves a point that is not addressed by Gunners in his article. Gunners is basically saying meat isn't carcinogenic as long as it's cooked the right way. But he keeps quiet about the fact that this study that he linked to shows that carbohydrate foods form the least amount of carcinogenic compounds when cooked compared to meat and meat substitutes and high fat foods. Gunners' bottom line is that the link between unprocessed red meat and cancer is very weak in men and non-existent in women. This may depend on the way meat is cooked because overheating can form carcinogens. All Gunners managed to do in this article was show that processed meat is unhealthy and is linked to colorectal cancer. His last study that he linked to showed that carbohydrate foods form the least carcinogenic compounds compared to meat, meat substitutes, and high fat foods. Also, the two studies that he linked to showing that red meat and colorectal cancer are unrelated are trumped by larger studies that do show a link between cancer and meat intake. Additionally, while there are ways to cook meat that can reduce carcinogens, there are also carcinogens and other components in the meat that are unavoidable, no matter how the meat is cooked. This is not exclusive to red meat. The cooked meat carcinogens implicated in promoting the initiation, 
growth, and spread of breast cancer may also increase the risk of prostate cancer. The mechanism through which the consumption of well-done meat may increase prostate cancer risk is via the release of mutagenic compounds during cooking. The heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are chemicals formed when the muscles of mammals, fish, or birds are cooked by high-temperature methods such as pan-frying or barbecuing. And in chicken, temperature doesn't have to be that high. Just baking at about 350 for 15 minutes leads to significant production of heterocyclic amines, including FIP. These cooked meat carcinogens have also recently been associated with increased risk of kidney cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, and pancreatic cancer, which is not a cancer we want to get. But this raises the so-called paradox of preparing meat, noted by the Harvard Health Letter. Well cooked, and you risk cancer. Undercooked, and risk E. coli. Eating boiled meat is probably the safest. The cooked meat carcinogen FIP can cause DNA mutations that may initiate a tumor, may then promote the growth of the cancer due to its potent estrogenic activity, and the third strike is that FIP may then promote the invasiveness of breast cancer cells. The way breast tumors kill is by metastasis. The way you test invasiveness is you put cancer cells into what's called an invasion chamber. This is the underside of the filter, showing no invasion. But add some estrogen, and you can see a few cancer cells peeking through. Add some FIP, and they really start going on the move. FIP is potently estrogenic, is capable of powerful hormonal activity, and is able to potently stimulate breast cancer cells to invade through a membrane model. The FIP is able to exert this pro-invasive appearance in breast cancer cells at such low concentrations is remarkable. The genetic toxicity of the compound, coupled to its ability to enhance cell proliferation and invasion, indicates that FIP can act not only to initiate the carcinogenic process, but also to promote it. But if you're able to somehow dodge cooked meats and don't suck on a cigarette, maybe it's not so difficult to avoid after all. Gunners is plain wrong to assert that meat does not cause cancer. To reduce your risk of getting cancer, it's best to avoid meat, dairy, and eggs, and instead eat whole plant foods.